happen. Although we are in a tight economic market, actually what we're seeing is some of the highest demands um, for, for talent that we've ever seen in the last 50 years. And this is across the globe. Now, what that tells us is our biggest problem isn't actually, you know, robots taking over all of our jobs. Our, our biggest problem is there aren't enough skilled people to fill the roles that we're looking for, right? Now, at that point, what that means is the labor market becomes very competitive and very expensive. Now, if you combine that with the fact that the rate of change is so fast and you're going to constantly need new skills or redeploy the people inside your organization, it's just not sustainable for a business to keep spending money to buy talent every time they need to bridge a skills gap. And therefore, a superpower that a business needs to build in order to be able to win the talent war is the ability to be able to build those skills in-house, right? Now, it's not just important to do that to avoid the expensive cost of hiring externally. It's also important to do that because if you don't, your best talent is going to leave the organization. Now, why are they going to leave the organization? Because it's such a great job market, right? And now is the best time for the people with the right skills. If you're not supporting their career growth, they can keep walking until they find a company that is going to support their growth. And so because there's so much opportunity out there, it really puts the pressure on companies to help them build the skills they need to grow in their career. And growth starts with, like you mentioned, Gary, talent mobility is, is where we kind of finish with growth is helping them find a relevant role. But if you work backwards from that, in order to support employee growth, we need to help them build the skills they need. And in order to help them build the skills they need, we need to make sure they're engaging in relevant learning. So it does all start with engaging in learning in order to drive talent mobility and career growth. Yeah, and what's even more worrying, to your point, if they don't find it internally, they'll go and find it elsewhere. The survey you mentioned right at the start that came out yesterday, I read the full thing, and it, what's even worse is that if people aren't getting internally, they'll pay out of their own pocket to build the skills they need, which is really interesting. So I got this down in front of me, but in the last 12 months, um, the majority of employees, 57% paid for external learning content out of their own pocket. So like you said, you need the skills internally. The people are telling you they need it. And if they're not getting it from you, either they'll go and find it somewhere else or they'll upskill themselves to the point where they're ready to future proof themselves. But it's a bit of a sad state of affairs for reading the full data on that, because the biggest thing I took away is a third of people said they were overwhelmed when thinking about the change in skills requirements. And a third of people don't feel they have the skills needed for their future role. So, you know, not even from like a business perspective, but from how happy are your people do they feel they've got job security? How engaged are they at work? Because they know they've got the right skills versus they're worrying about whether they're going to be redundant. So as well as all these kind of business benefits, there's a big people benefit to to making sure you're focusing yeah. on people's skills. Absolutely. And I think like, look, hearing those data points, Gary, that you just shared, uh, and I can see in the chat, Amber, you, you've asked for the survey. We'll, we'll drop the link in the chat for you to see. Um, you know, l and should really be asking themselves some serious questions here right like if how can it be that um we've got to a situation where um you know employees are spending outside of the organization to build their skills to go elsewhere um another data point which many of you may have seen but um mckinsey found that only 12 percent of people employees reported using any of the skills they got from internal l d now what that shows is a lot of wastage Right. That means 88 percent of people didn't acquire any relevant skills as a result of what was on offer um, from an L&D perspective inside the organization. Um, and so this really needs to we need to ask ourselves as L&D about our purpose and about, you know, are we actually delivering impact or not? If this is the state of affair, like the days of just being able to do compliance and that is sufficient, are, are well and truly gone. Right. That there are now self-service solutions for compliance. I mean, compliance can, can, in essence, run itself, especially with AI combining with compliance learning content. And so it will become very difficult for L&D functions that are dependent on running compliance to really justify their place and spend within the organization. And we really need to move beyond that in the maturity scale to be able to add meaningful value to the company. And it's also, Warren, if you think about 
justifying spend or showing ROI if a bunch of people are leaving your company said, well, we didn't get the skills we needed. So we paid out of our own pocket to upskill in this thing. And then we decided to leave the company because we, now we have the skills plus we can get an opportunity elsewhere. That is, um, I would be worried if I was kind of hearing that. I know we get stuck in the sort of number-based metrics when we discuss about ROI. But actually, if you think about if that many people were paying out of their own pocket, imagine if the volume of noise, if that many people were through their feedback mechanisms going, look, the the stuff you're giving me doesn't help, like you said to that yeah. McKinsey stat. Yeah. I, I mean, I would even flip it from ROI to talking about um, COI, which is the cost of inaction, right? Is by not doing anything and not helping your people build the skills they need, in essence, what you're saying is your best talent are leaving. Now, we can put a cost to that, right? There's the cost of missed opportunity, right? That you now have an empty seat um, where you could be getting a certain amount of productivity, but you're not because that talent has left the building. There's the cost of uh, knowledge loss. Now, that talent takes with them um, all the great stuff they've learned as a part of the company, which now you need to be able to relearn. Um, but also the cost of replacement in a competitive job market, it's now going to be expensive for you to find a replacement. Now that you combine that cost of not doing anything versus the cost of getting a solution in place to solve that problem, the cost of the solution is going to be a fraction. So when you're thinking about building a business case internally, um, you know, many L&D professionals tell me they sometimes find it hard to build an ROI story. Well, what I recommend at this time to, to get your business case um, through the organization is to talk about the cost of inaction. You know, if the business doesn't do anything about this, what is the cost to the business? And if that's significantly more expensive than the cost of doing something about it, then you have your business case.